After all, what's so bad about being a slut? And you damn well know I'd be sucking lots of dicks and fucking lots of pussies with my fake fucking strap on or whatever the goddamn shit I have. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna talk about sex. This time I want to propose an idea as to why so many people think that it's okay to slut shame or why sex is such a big deal or why there's so few people who think that sex isn't a taboo, isn't something you should hide, that their sexuality might be dirty, shameful, nasty, all the bad adjectives and honestly it's a very simple idea. I think that people take themselves too seriously and in turn take sex too seriously. Let me try to explain what I mean but first I want to add a little disclaimer in there. As someone who likes to seek as much knowledge in conversation as possible, as someone who loves to philosophize, I always want to be free to talk about and share my ideas with you guys at the same time. As a libertarian, if you are enjoying the fact that sex is so taboo and that makes it hotter for you, if having a very limited number of partners and experiences in sex in your lifetime is something that makes you happy, go ahead and do that. I am only here to make you think and to offer you alternative arguments. This is something I geek out about, talking about this stuff and if I can combine it with sex, all the fucking better. So, I find it kind of cringy when people take themselves too seriously. It's just something that makes me teardrop on my head like a Japanese anime because when you think about it, we are such small insignificant organisms. Everyone is going through similar stuff and has their own story. And while I do understand that since we're only inside of ourselves, it is a little bit hard to not feel like the world revolves around us sometimes or the things that happen to us are catastrophic, unique, or a bigger deal than they are. That makes sense to me, I get that. But it still makes me cringe. Our personal moral codes, our society, and the way we live isn't really that big of a deal. It's not a fact, it's not objective truth. And when I see people taking things to heart, little mantras that they learned growing up from their parents or from older generations, things like the first person you have sex with needs to be a very, very important and special person to you, or that it's a big deal that you might have slept with someone that you regret sleeping with, or that someone might have seen your nude body or nude photos. Especially when they're adults, it kind of invokes that whole feeling that a lot of us get when we watch a teenager overreact to something social. Come on now, the world's bigger than your high school. You'll get over it and it will be nothing once you're an adult. That's kind of how I feel about the modern person and their view on sex. In its very basic form, sex is just a biological imperative to further our species. I know most of my philosophies go against our biological imperative because I don't want to have kids, I don't want to settle down and mother some man's genetics and offspring. That's just not what I want to do. And I feel like the fact that we have logic and reason on our sides as higher beings, as humans, means that we don't really have to adhere to those biological codes anymore. We can make choices. We still have these instincts to do these things, but we can apply logic and reason to them and decide what's best for us or what makes us most happy. In the past, what makes us most happy would be just hunting, gathering, nurturing. So anyway, let's zero on the idea, the first idea that I brought up, that the first person you have sex with has to be a special experience. And why I feel like this is harmful to the idea of sexual freedom and sexual liberation. And overall just having more sex and more fun, which is something that's very important to me. And I think a lot of other people crave as well, but they're worried about the social backlash from it. So why does our first time have to be so special? And what kind of unrealistic standards are we holding ourselves to for that first time? I mean, let's face it, if we have our first time when we're younger, in our teens or early 20s, like most of the world, not only have we not had any sexual experience prior, but we haven't had much life experience. So to expect something other than mediocrity or maybe even complete and utter awkwardness is a little bit too much. This leads people to be shy, anxious, to avoid getting into these relationships, to avoid going all the way when they want to, when they feel like they're ready, simply because they have unrealistic expectations of how the first time is supposed to be. Now coming from the standpoint that I do, where sex is healthy and should be explored, and your body and your partner's body is a fucking playground, this just seems counterintuitive to me. Most of the people I've talked to had terrible first experiences, and I'm sure most of the reason is because it's not a realistic standard to set on yourself, that the first time should be amazing and with the person that you are with for the rest of your life or someone who really means something to you. Again, I hate that I have to harp on this, but as I said in the beginning of the video, if you want to wait, if you don't feel ready, don't do it. I'm simply challenging the notion that there's some kind of imperative societal expectation, that there's something wrong with you if you don't wait, or if you don't find your first time special. I myself don't remember my first time that well, I just remember instigating it and wanting to do it, I don't have any regrets on the person that I chose to sleep with the first time. Granted, that person was a good choice because he was a boyfriend of a long time and probably one of the nicest guys I've ever dated. But I don't think I would have if it was a total disaster either. It's just sex. 
It's a few minutes to an hour of your life that either feels good or doesn't, and you move on from it. But a lot of people in society can't move on from bad sexual experiences because they put way too much weight on it. If sex is looked at something that's not that big of a deal, something that we all do and something that we all enjoy, something that's normal, there wouldn't be any slut shaming. I think the reason that there's a disproportionate amount of slut shaming to women and not to men is simply because of our sexual dimorphism. Women are supposed to take care of the babies, settle down, whereas men are supposed to go populate their seed onto like as many women as possible to further their genetic code. So a woman who's sleeping around and not settling down and taking care of offspring is seen as a bad thing. But as I've said before, we don't have to follow our biology anymore. We can do things that actually make us happy. So if a woman wants to have a lot of sex for whatever reason, that's her choice. And there's nothing logically wrong with that. Now let's look at the logic that some people try to throw at people about why slutting around is bad, or why they prefer a virgin. Even though a woman who has more experience in bed will probably give better head, know some tricks that you don't, and be able to teach you a few things. All things that are pluses. So the first thing you hear is sluts or people who sleep around a lot have a lot of STDs. Now sure, if you're having unprotected, unsafe sex, you're not getting checked and you're not taking care of your health, that is totally a possibility. But no one scoffs at the notion of someone eating a bunch of cheeseburgers if that person is in a healthy weight range. Same should be said for sex. If the girl is clean, taking care of herself, it shouldn't really matter what she does sexually. Most people who engage in sex with a healthy mindset, they're taking care of their health. So STDs shouldn't be a problem. And if STDs were such a problem, and that was the only reason, we wouldn't be berating, putting down, and shaming people who are in the sex industry, like porn stars. Porn stars are by far the cleanest people. A majority of the porn stars, even some of the ones that aren't Brazzers level, have to get tested every week. They have to provide proof of their cleanliness. They douche, they wash down there. You have a much lower chance of getting an STD from a random porn star than a girl you met at a bar who slept with 10 or less people. Not only is it the law for them to get tested and to be clean, they know a lot of tips and tricks that the average folk do not. My hypothesis for why people care so much about whether someone's had a lot of other partners always thirsty, is pure narcissism and ego. The man doesn't want the other woman to ever have had another man, because that makes him feel special, cool, like he is her whole world. It's an insecurity thing, it's an ego thing, it's a territorial thing. It is by no means a rational thing. Correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, I'm just so thirsty. With women, it's often a territorial thing too. Women are very competitive with other women, and at the same time, and at a higher rate than men, it's an insecurity issue. Eve, stop it! fucking rolling a screw around. My ring light's like falling apart on its own. People who don't allow other people to look at, to admire, or to find sexy their partner are very insecure in their relationship and their ability to keep their partner. Women who get territorial that their man is even talking to another woman. Men who get pissed off because another man is checking out their woman. This is the same principle and this is the reason that monogamy, other than the fact that it's just the social norm and it's really hard to break out of social norms for some people, is still so prevalent. Again, just my theory, but it seems like a lot of people are hiding behind this outdated tradition and social norm just because they wouldn't be able to stand, emotionally, the idea of their significant other not being their property, basically. Enter into this social contract and promise she'll only be mine and mine forever. Even though we all find other people attractive and want to have a lot of sex. I've talked about monogamy a lot in other videos, so we'll kind of stray away from that. But I've always just thought it was kind of funny to be like, my man, my girl. When it goes beyond the cute pet name sentiment and actually turns into something of jealousy, insecurity, rage, to me that's dysfunctional. It's really weird that it's the norm. So another point I'd like to make, the idea that one's body is a palace that only a few people get to experience. This is another one of the ideas that I am also guilty of. It's one of the reasons why I don't do porn. One of the many, many reasons. And again, it has nothing to do with porn stars. Love porn and porn stars. How narcissistic is it to act as though even though we were put on this planet to procreate, that we are so special that we should be so choosy with who we have sex with? Just a question, I am also choosy with who I have sex with. But at the same time, the reason why I will lower my standards, the reason why I have that rapist attractive category, or the reason why I might have sex with people who are only intellectually stimulating to me and not as much physically stimulating, as long as they're not disgusting, and past some threshold of physical attraction, is because while I like to be exclusive and I like to play up on the fetish that I am some kind of unattainable person that only a few people get to experience, I am well aware how narcissistic that sounds. And everyone is like that. Sometimes I like to just think about the idea, and I've mentioned this before, of just like having sex with your friends. 
you're hanging out with a group of friends, shit goes down, stuff happens. It was a fun and interesting experience. You may never do it again, or you may end up doing it often and just having a fuck buddy relationship. I like to entertain that notion. I like to entertain the notion of having sex with professional acquaintances or really, really good friends who I never thought of that way. Just having a friend who I don't find repulsive and we can just satisfy each other's needs. Like so many people are so repulsed or taken aback by that idea because so many people think that casual sex is something to be demonized. I know a lot of my hedonistic and nihilistic ideas sometimes rub people the wrong way and a lot of people think that this is just the downfall of society. No moral code. How can you be a moral nihilist? The world will just go to shit and everyone will be fucking raping, killing, and murdering to their own personal gain. But honestly, I don't do that. I enjoy my life, but there are still laws I have to follow in order to fit into society. I think that and the intrinsic value of making yourself feel better by making others feel better, while every deed is still a little bit selfish, that's what makes the world go round. It makes people feel good to have good deeds wrought upon them. I guess wrought is a bad word here. And to give out good deeds. While I don't believe in karma of any kind, I do believe in paying it forward because you can see the visual effect that being nice to someone and then that person being in a better mood and being nice to someone else has. I don't do it for any karmic give back. I don't do it to better the world or to to talk up my strong sense of morality because honestly, I don't have one. But people want to, at their core, at least in some way, be good people. There's no reason to sugarcoat it and say that things aren't selfish or to demonize certain acts because otherwise it's just gonna be a slippery slope fallacy all the way to destruction and anarchy. I will always be of the opinion that sex is healthy, it's natural, do whatever you want with your body, and you should stop judging other people for doing what they want with theirs. If you wanna judge, question, and do whatever you will, that's fine. But as a libertarian, I take issue with anyone actually impeding the happiness of someone else in a very direct way. I don't get mad when people call me a slut and say I shouldn't do things or I need Jesus or whatever, but you damn well know I'm gonna defend my rights. Aw, uh, yeah. After all, what's so bad about being a slut? It's liberating, it's awesome, and I'm saying this as a person who isn't really a slut. I may look like one, but I mean, I don't have a lot of casual sex. I have some casual sex, I'm very pro-casual sex. But it's rare that anyone actually gets through the vetting process that I have, the very personal one. And it's rare that things line up correctly. I mean, I have to avoid all the people who are gonna get attached emotionally, cause drama, I'm kinda lazy and a shut-in. And all of these things impede me having casual sex, but I can definitely see myself being thrust into a different lifestyle where I have more opportunities to have sex with a bunch of people, where I have people over in my house all the time. And you damn well know I'd be sucking lots of dicks and fucking lots of pussies with my fake fucking strap-on or whatever the goddamn shit I have. <coughs> anyway, I hope this video makes you think. I'd love to hear your responses in the comments. Why so much is the first time so important? Is not being labeled a slut so important? Why is your body such a temple? Why should it be so restricted and not catered to with all the fingers, dicks, and tongues, and otherwise? Eve. I just feel like people are far too wrapped up in social status and social standing, in the ideas and opinions of others, and so many people just don't even think outside the box on issues. They're just kind of raised a certain way and that's how they stay forever. And they'll vehemently argue for it, with nothing objective to back them up other than the fact that it was drilled into their brains at a certain point in their lives. I have a vast amount of respect for someone who can listen to an opposing opinion and not just immediately trigger that emotional response and act on that emotional response with the ad homonyms in the comments. Somebody who can actually think and process different perspectives even if they don't turn to agree or change their minds. I don't care about that. I just want to talk about things that interest me and I hope you guys enjoy listening, especially when it's about sex. Let me know what you think, post in the comments. If you like my channel, please subscribe, like that video, and oh my god, it's so annoying to have wide hips. Like, look at this. It just rolls back up. Do any girls have this problem? I swear. I love you guys. See you in the next video. Mwah. Oh god, guys, I was just about to leave the filming room. I was like picking up all my stuff and I thought about this really retarded quote and I have to share it with you guys. And I don't want to share it in an actual video where it just rolls off my tongue and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm so clever. Cringily clever. What's biological might not be logical. I'm a genius. I'm a poet. I'm out.